So I've just upgraded my five-year-old 300 watt output simulated sine wave APC brand UPS for this new CyberPower 900 watt pure sine wave UPS. So this will be a review of this unit per se. I'm going to take a more generic approach in this video. I'm going to touch on some topics that I don't think are uh, covered in uh, most YouTube videos. And I'm going to try to add some value to this discussion. Like typically, buyers of a unit like this, like high output, pure sine wave, would be looking at powering a desktop plus a monitor, you know, like a few hundred watts, albeit for not a very long period of time in a power failure. But enough time to do an orderly shutdown. So my needs are different. In a power outage, I'm looking to keep alive low watt demand devices for as long as possible. It includes my cable modem, this magic jack box which gives me landline over internet, and these work with ordinary wireless phones. These three things in a power outage I'd like to keep alive for as long as possible. With my old 300 watt UPS, I could get about 25 minutes. With this new unit, I can get over two and a half hours. Now in the five years since I bought that first unit, the price gap between a simulated sine wave and a pure sine wave has narrowed. So, you know, maybe 50, 60 bucks, whatever the price difference is, I felt, let's go with a pure sine wave. Again, what's up with these air quotes on the pure sine wave? We're going to take a closer look at that pure sine wave with the help of gadgets number 169, which allows us to scope mains safely, and with the help of my trusty HS512 Max oscilloscope. Here is what the main power looks like. Okay, nice sine wave there. I unplugged the unit and it switched over to uh, the backup power. We're on the battery. So this is the pure sine wave that this unit generates. I wasn't expecting that. My guess is that you weren't expecting that either. The hype is that these pure sine waves are as good, if not better, than what you find on the mains. Not so. Here are the mains. But compared to the simulated sine wave of the old unit, compared to that, the pure sine wave looks pretty good. Now, is it just this unit, or do these so-called pure sine waves uh, look the same across all brands? Well, I wouldn't be in a position to know. I'm working with a sample of one. But before we're too quick to judge this unit, I've got a story here. Initially, I had ordered this unit. It's an APC. Uh, that's the two brands most commonly found on Amazon, APC and CyberPower. My old 300 watt UPS, you'll remember, was an APC. Within an hour or two of placing this order, I stumble upon this video on Mr. Carlson's lab. He had an APC unit very similar to the one I had just ordered that had failed on him. And being Mr. Carlson, he took it apart to find out what the problem was. And he found out that they had used some aluminum wiring at the transformer rather than copper and that the solder onto the aluminum does not hold up. So I went on Amazon and I took a really close look at the reviews on the unit that I had just placed an order on, and people were reporting this very same problem. So now I'm trying to scramble to cancel that order on time. It had not shipped yet, and that's a good thing because you see they have a very strict and upfront no return policy on these things because of the battery and I guess the weight also. These things are heavy. I got lucky and Amazon was able to process my cancellation. And that's where I went with the CyberPower. There are way too many power outages out here. 
like more than you'd expect from a supposedly first world country, right? Uh, last Sunday was an 11 and a half hour outage, right? And that was the catalyst to me making this purchase. It was a planned outage, but then there are also the unplanned ones. And I have a generator or stuff like that. But this, having this with a prolonged uh, time is going to allow me to uh, hold off a little bit on hooking up the generator. I can get a sense uh, for how long, you know, I'm still online. I can maybe get an ETA from the power utility. I'm still connected to the world. And then I can bite the bullet if it's prolonged and go ahead and uh, hook up the generator. I don't like to run a generator full on, like I, maybe an hour here and then an hour or so off. So your refrigerators and freezers are able to uh, stay cold. And God forbid that these outages up here are in the wintertime because uh, it doesn't take long here. You need heat. So by having this unit uh, give me a little bit of time, I can cycle the generator. And for you to know, if this was like at 70%, it would take about an hour to top up the battery back to 100%. That's kind of the charge time. Since we're having so much fun, let's have a look at another claim. This typical transfer time of 4 milliseconds here. So here we were on the mains, right? And here we transferred over to the battery backup. And the transition took place in this area right here. Now, I would say that the mains dropped off right here, right? And here is what 4 milliseconds looks like. That's a far cry from where the sign was restored again on battery backup. Right? So if we move that over to maybe here, I'd say that's where the sign picks up again and we're looking at almost 20 milliseconds here. Now I've repeated this a couple of times and I was able to get as good as 10 milliseconds but nowhere is it anywhere near 4 milliseconds. Can't trust anybody. Now does it matter much? Well not with these devices like they don't miss a beat right? But if you had some uh, sensitive equipment like medical devices or uh, critical data um, and you didn't want to have these kind of interruptions, units that uh, have constant backup power and no switching, uh, now you're talking quite a bit of money. So for us residential use, this does a trick. But it's not for milliseconds. So one more claim here. Typically, the battery lifetime is between one to three years. Like, I'll concur with that. Like, this is five years old, midway through ownership. I did change the battery, probably getting close to due for another one. And I expect that on the new unit, in within three years' time, I'll be changing the batteries in there. And it is batteries with an S. There's two in there. Which brings us to the dark side of this technological world that we live in. What to do with this? I got no use for it. Um, I can't think of anybody that I can give it to, especially if it's due to have a new battery soon. So it's going to get disposed of. I'm going to try to be responsible about it. I'm going to go in there and see if there are any parts I can salvage for my spare parts uh, collection. Then I'll hang on to it till next spring when the town has an annual pickup, like a curbside pickup for these things. And that's where it's going to end up. In closing, I've got a little something for you perpetual motion enthusiasts. 